Let's turn to uh, foreign relations for a second. Uh, the Democratic Party has pledged to adopt diplomatic and security policies that are less, quote unquote, subservient uh, to the United States than those of the poli similar policies of the LDP. Is this still the case? And if it is, do you think the U.S.-Japan alliance might suffer in some way if the Democrats win? Probably not. Um, the, the starting point, I think, has to be that the DPJ has been in the opposition since the party was formed back in the late 1990s. And so in opposition, what you do is you oppose what the, the LDP is in favor of. Well, particularly under Prime Minister Koizumi, uh, the Liberal Democratic Party leaned very heavily in the direction of trying to please the United States by going along with the war on terror, the invasion of Iraq. Uh, they dispatched uh, vessels to the Indian Ocean uh, for refueling operations for coalition forces. They dispatched for a couple of years uh, 550 non-combat soldiers to uh, Iraq. Quite frankly, if I were Japanese, um, I would have opposed those things too. And so I, I personally happen to have some sympathy for the DPJ on, on being in opposition. As they come into power though, um, now some other forces are going to come into play. One of the most important things for any Japanese government is to show to the electorate that they can manage the US-Japan relationship well. And that includes the security relationship. So um, they're really not going to be in a position to do things that, uh, that fundamentally irritate uh, the United States. Uh, but we could see you know, some changes. Uh, they could, for example, choose not to continue the refueling operation in the Indian Ocean. Frankly, I don't think the Obama administration cares uh, all that much one way or the other, except I do think the administration would ask the following question. If you're not going to do that, if you're not going to do the refueling operation, what are you going to do? Uh, what role are you going to play in the world? Maybe it doesn't have to be military. You know, we'll accept that if, if you don't want to do that. But you've got to do something. You're a big, rich, powerful nation, and we see problems out in the world. Uh, we'd like Japan to stand up and do something. Uh, whether the DPJ can hammer out some ideas on alternative things to do, like uh, dispatch of more foreign aid workers to Afghanistan, for example. I don't know. Uh, that's something we'll just have to wait and see. One final question. It seems the DPJ is uh, more uh, uh, willing to have overtures towards China and uh, to have better relations with China seems to be uh, one of the key uh, goals. Do you think this will indeed be the case if they, if they do win and we'll see a warming of relations with China and with Korea? I certainly hope so. Uh, again, the legacy is that uh, under Prime Minister Koizumi, relations with both Korea and China deteriorated a great deal, with gratuitous insults and provocations being flung back and forth for uh, pretty much the whole time that Koizumi was in office. Uh, it got so bad, actually, that the prime ministers since Koizumi have backed off of that, even though they have been known as being rather nationalistic prior to becoming <coughs> prime minister. So I hope, actually, the DPJ, having carved out this position in opposition to the LDP, will stick to it once they're uh, in office. Uh, because I think there's probably nothing is more important in Asia than maintaining a good relationship between Japan and China. They are the two big powers. Uh, and again, there's been such a, a legacy of bad feeling between Japan and Korea uh, stemming from the colonial period uh, in the first half of the, the, the 20th century uh, that again, if, there's, uh, if they can take some positive steps on some of these issues, uh, it would be most welcome. And, I, and I, sh I really hope they can do that. Well, Ed Lincoln, thank you for being with us. Ed Lincoln of the Stern School of Business. Ed will be back with us on September 1st at 6.30 here at the Japan Society, 6.30 p.m., when the Japan Society will be holding a post-election discussion, Japan Election 2009, Political, Economic, and Security Implications. Ed, as I say, will join a panel of other experts to discuss the outcome of the election. We hope you will join us as well. For information on the September 1st program and all our programs at the Japan Society, please visit us at www.japansociety.org. Thank you.